right, everyone. Hope you're well. So, it is taking two months, but this, the Elderflower sparkling wine, to be sparkling wine, is now finished. It is now clear. It's good to go. So we had a bit of a problem, otherwise known as cold weather. It just it happens sometimes. So the yeast went to sleep, but it's warmed up again. So it finished off and it's cleared. It's good to go. So if you haven't seen the part one video, I'll stick the link up, up there. You know, you know the drill by now. So I've gone ahead to save a bit of time and, you know, so you don't get bored and sterilized everything. I have sterilized my worktop. I have sterilized the bottles, the hydrometer, the siphoning tube. See, I knew I'd get it eventually. And even the brewing peg, because I always forget the brewing peg. All sterilized using bleach and washing up liquid. Now the bottles had been rinsed and they smell fresh but not bleachy, because I did get asked, and I occasionally get asked, do you rinse bleach off of your bottles? The answer is yes. I have said. <laughs> sure, why not? Now, not only that, because a couple of these bottles are being given away as a gift for Christmas, I've got some gold, real gold. Um, just, just be very careful when you buy gold leaf. There are a lot of fakes out there. Um, even ones that say pure gold or 24 karat gold. Normally that is the company name. Uh, in the first video, I stuck a link down to real gold. Um, so you can go from there. Even if you don't buy it, you can just see what you're looking for and then find it wherever you want. So I've got some gold leaf that I'm gonna be adding into a couple of these clear pretty bottles because gifts is what we like. Cool. This doesn't need to be sterilized. Gold is a natural antiseptic, just like silver. So let's see what we've got in our wine. I've got my hydrometer and I'm good to go. So uh, I do believe we said it was 11.5% and I said it was uh, 1.070. It's actually slightly over, but close enough. And uh, just let this settle out. Very fancy. So the hydrometer is reading 990. So we've got our 11%. Oh yes, close enough. We're home brewers. We, we don't need to know the 0.1 or 0.2. It doesn't matter. So we've got 11% alcohol, a good, clean, firm, full fermentation, which is always nice. So <laughs> I'm gonna pick two bottles. Very nice. And I'm gonna add the gold leaf into the bottles now because uh, this stuff is a pain. It really is. I mean, they're only little small things, but at the same time, they, they get stuck on everything. They're like glue. So <laughs> I'm gonna put two gold leaves in each bottle. And I have a total of five. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the other camera you won't even know, and you'll see me do this. Pretty cool, right? As expected, the gold leaf, uh, it sticks to everything, like really does stick to everything. It's not in the bottom, it's actually in the top, in little bits as I was trying to move it around and get it off the rim. Uh, I wasted a whole piece of gold leaf the first time in the first video because uh, I touched it with my finger and it stuck to my finger. You know, it's just, it's really fiddly stuff. So the gold is in the bottle, so it's time to start, you know. Siphoning, oh yes. So I've got my sterile brewing peg and my lovely, uh, lovely siphon tube. So I'm gonna go through and I am going to uh, fill up all of these bottles with beautiful liquid. Once I, uh, once I untangle this, why is it always like that? There we go. 
Now I do have some water inside of the siphoning tube because well, it makes an auto siphon and uh, no one's really going to care about 20 ml of water. So uh, I will see you when uh, I'm done. Catch you in a bit. So our siphoning and bottling has been completed uh, using that tiny little siphon tube gives you a lot more control but it takes more time almost as if small tube takes longer yeah. so the ones with the gold inside I mean you just give it a little swirl and it's got gold swirling around in there oh looks so good gonna make a fantastic gift I hope so anyway either way it's got gold in it it looks cool so Usually this would be the step would we degas the wine. I degas in the bottle because well I don't want to pass my wine from one demijohn to another repeatedly. The more times you mess around with your wine, the more likely it is to get oxidized or go off or get infected, you know, all of those things. So less movement is better. And uh, for those people that don't know, degassing is just uh, removing the excess CO2. So just give the bottles a shake and then uh, Quite simply open it up to release the gas as you may be able to hear but because we're making this sparkling we don't have to bother with that now these are ordinary wine bottles and uh, I did get a comment that uh, oh no ordinary wine bottles will explode no quite frankly no no they don't um, wine bottles are pretty sturdy if you think the average beer bottle is about the same thickness as a wine bottle so you're perfectly fine and we're not going to be carbonating it like a champagne it's a sparkling wine we just want a little bit of fizz so usually if you're priming beer for instance um, a 500 ml bottle is about half a teaspoon I'm gonna be adding half a teaspoon into a 750 ml bottle you can add the equivalent of what you would add into a beer bottle into a wine bottle and you're pretty much good to go so what I've got is uh, just some plain old white sugar and a half teaspoon measuring uh, spoon though an ordinary teaspoon will work because we're only using half a teaspoon you can add a little bit more if you like approximately it's one of the reasons why I like lighter carbonation that and uh, I want to drink my beer or my wine without belching so uh, there we go let's do the sparkly ones first so a uh, half teaspoon measurement in it goes Ooh. And funny enough, I'm going to go through and do all of these. Da -da -da. Place the lid. From past mistakes, make sure the lids are on tightly. Otherwise, you just end up shaking your wine or whatever it is that you're doing everywhere. There we go. Glad I did that step. So now we just go through and dissolve the sugar. So just shake it all up. Ah, this is normally where I'll drop one. <laughs> I wouldn't laugh. Looking good. So all of our bottles have been primed They've been shaken up, all the sugar is dissolved in here, and well, they look pretty damn good, I have to say. Especially the gold ones, I, I like the gold. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did, but uh, I, I actually do like it. So, now comes the really boring bit, because this is a dry wine, and uh, well, it's a dry wine, it's gonna taste terrible, uh, so it needs aging. So basically, we're going to put these two ones side and we're going to come back in December. Oh yes, that makes me cry. So uh, yeah, we started these in January and we're not going to get to try these until December. That's, that's a year, well, almost. <sighs> but when we do come back, these are going to be beautiful and you can age these for as long as you want because uh, the longer you age them, the better they're going to taste. So. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Gold. Who knew? <laughs> Don't forget to check out some of the other ones. And, well, subscribe and share and like and all of those things. 
if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later.